and I think we're live. <laughs> I think we did it, you guys. <laughs> All right, let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. We are, as always, trying new things and trying to make sure that it's working for everybody okay. So let me know if it's working. Uh, give me a thumbs up and I appreciate it. I'm Teresa Coates. We are here for another episode of Sew Together Tuesday. We are back this week. We are doing something uh, that we haven't done in a little bit. We're doing some applique, which is super fun. So this is a great little pillow. We are doing the, what did they call it? The Silly Cuddle Monster Pillow. This is the guy we're doing today. Ta-da! Okay, so this is the pattern. We've got this one. You can find it on our uh, blog. So if you look in the description, there's a little link for it. There's probably a link somewhere else that you can get this pattern. It makes this guy. How cute is this? Okay, and he's got this cute little... 3D tongue, which is kind of extra special. Um, so we're going to work on him today. So there is some, there's a few things in this that we haven't, like I said, done in a while or haven't done before um, that are different constructions. So that'll be kind of fun. And we're working with dimple, which we don't use very often. So a lot of people are very familiar with the cuddle dimple. Uh, we were just talking about how it's a very popular one for babies because it has this texture to it. It's also a little bit different to work with. And we'll talk about that a little bit when we're doing the cutting, but it is different than working just with traditional Cuddle 3. But it's super cute. The little extra bumps make it super fun. So there we go. That's what we're working on today. All right, so I uh, wanna make sure I get through all of the things. So thanks for joining us. We're so happy that you're here. We are here live on YouTube and on Facebook. So feel free to leave comments. We've got people who are able to answer your questions as well as ones that um, will get passed on to me. And so if you have any questions, please, please, please leave them and we'll get them answered to you either in the comments or here. All right. Uh, we also want to remind you that you need to share the video. And if you share it, then you'll be entered to win a kit. And every week we give away a cuddle quilt kit. And so we'll be giving away one this week. Just make sure that you share your video. We can tell who shared. So don't worry about uh, letting us know that you did. We can see that. So share away. Tell all of your sewing friends and your people that, you know, need to learn how to love sewing with cuddle because that's what we want to do is teach them how to love sewing with this stuff. It's great. So anyway, we're doing this project today. I'm very excited. Thanks for coming. And let's get started. So uh, and we're doing a two-parter uh, today and tomorrow, just so you know. So we're going to get through part of it today and then we'll finish construction tomorrow because it's a little bit longer than we wanted to do in one fell swoop. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with actually making the round face part of it because everything gets applied to that face. And uh, so we want to make the face first. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with some cuddle dimple. I just have the cuddle dimple orange is what I have today. We have a few variations of oranges, so you can pick your own. You could also do it in other colors. We've done it in, uh, it's like a tealy color. I want to say it's breeze maybe um, that we've done it in with just cuddle, cuddle three solid and that works just as well too. So if you don't particularly love the dimple, you can always just use a regular solid as well. I've not done it in the Lux cuddle, but the solid and dimple work really cute and there are, you know, a hundred some colors of those. So totally, there's lots of choices to do. All right. So the first thing I did um, to get ready to make the pattern is a couple of things. So I have the pattern. I take the pattern. The first thing I did is I made copies of it. So I made copies of the pattern sheet and then I actually cut, I taped those up and then cut them. So if you've watched any of the videos before, it's how I sort of reinforce my patterns is I will make a copy and then put, um, what is it called? Pack, like packing tape on both sides of the paper to give it a little bit of extra oomph. All right. So this would be an example to show these. Actually, you can show all of these, Hawk. Um, so these were what I did with the pattern. So you can see they're shiny because of the tape on them. So I just tape it up both sides and cut them out. And this gives me some stability. And then I actually keep, I can keep my original because I don't really want to get rid of that in case I lose these pieces. I have the original that I can then do the same thing with. I also did a little bit where I put the direction of the nap. I did it on my, my chin piece too. So I put the direction of the nap that I wanted on here. That is not on the pattern. So you can pick that out yourself. The same with the tongue. I should have done that and I haven't yet. So maybe when we get to that part, I'll show you how I figured it out. Okay. So first I got the pattern pieces ready, taped them, and then I cut them out. I took the eye because the eye comes this way with the right eye, the left eye, and the pupil for both are the same color or the same size. So I taped them, cut them, traced out the pupil separately. And now I have the three pieces. Okay, so that's how I did that. Okay, so let me put these to the side and then we'll get started on the body of the face. 
We'll tackle that in just a minute. Okay. Put that there. Put that, I'll ch don't, let me forget to change my blade. Okay, I said I would, I would change it and I, I don't wanna forget. It's so easy to do. Okay, so <laughs> the first thing we wanna do, so in the pattern, uh, Gail Camargo is the one who designed the pattern and it's super, super cute. I absolutely love it. She and I sew a little bit differently. So in the pattern, she has you cut out the circle and then I think embroider the stuff on and then put it on to batting. And I chose to put it onto batting first, cut it out, and then do all of the applique. So the order of operations really is kind of a matter of what you like and what you prefer to do. It isn't set in stone by any stretch of the imagination. So do what you like and what be works best for your way of thinking. For me, it's to, it's to put it onto the batting first. Okay. So I've got my cuddle dimple. It says two 15 inch squares. I've just got a hunk of it that was big enough to fit my circle on twice. And then I've got some uh, Quilter's Dream batting. So I'm gonna do, um, I have them cut. Oh no, I have it in one big piece too. All right, so let me move this. Get that out of my way with all of my pieces. Oh, this is what I'm using too. So Quilter's Dream Poly is the batting that I'm using. So I really like this kind. It's really nice and thin. It's like eighth of an inch or so. Super thin, so it makes it where you can do a little bit extra because it has more stability, but without adding a whole lot of oomph to it, okay? So it's nice and thin, so it works really easily, but not, um, doesn't add a whole lot of oomph or a lot of weight to it, okay? So I use it for a lot of things, all of the quilts and stuff too. So I really, I do like it. Okay, so now I'm gonna put out my little fabric that, this is just an old sheet, and I'm just gonna put it out so I don't spray my board, okay? because I don't want to overspray my board or my sewing machine or anything else. So I'm just gonna put that out there and hope for the best, okay? All right, and now I've got my batting piece and I'll find my, my fabric. What did I do with it? Do you see it? Oh, here it is, I threw it on the floor. <laughs> I was like, I just had it. So I've got my uh, basting spray. So this is the Odif, um, my very well-loved can of basting spray. Uh, it's 505 spray. I really love it. It works very, very well for this and for all sorts of things. So if you're a quilter and you use basting spray otherwise to baste your quilts together, this is the brand I recommend because it doesn't have a lot of stickiness to it. Like it doesn't have over stickiness. So some of them will get really sticky. They smell a lot and then they will stick to the needle. So that's a question I get a lot is if it, um, if it, will if it will ruin the needle and it will not, okay? So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna lay my fabric out. So I've got extra batting for my fabric because that's the way I like to do it. I like to have a little bit of extra. And I'm gonna take this over here and I'm gonna fold it in half. So this is sort of how we do quilt kits too. And then I'm gonna spray the back of this. Okay. And then I'm just gonna pull this and I'm gonna let it roll down. And then I'll give it the little pat, 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 pat. Okay, and I'm gonna fold this back this direction until it starts to stick. So now I've got it to about halfway and I'm gonna spray the back of this. And I choose to spray the back of the fabric the fabric is polyester, so it won't soak in here. The batting is polyester too, so it won't. This is especially important if you're using a cotton batting, which I don't recommend, but if that's what you have or you have a cotton blend, if you put the basting spray, so this applies to regular quilting too, is that if you put the basting spray onto the batting, and especially if it's a high loft batting, it'll soak into the batting rather than giving it the extra stickiness. So by putting it onto the back of the fabric, you can't really soak in it stays really nicely on top. So when I lay it onto the batting, it just sticks to the batting, okay? So it's a, a small technique, but it works for cuddle and for regular sewing, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. You can see this has been a, a well-loved piece of fabric. It's got lots of little chunks out of it. Use all your scraps, right? Okay. Okay, so make sure that that is all patted down and is gonna work together now as one throughout the process. Okay, so now my batting and my fabric are just one piece. They're gonna to stick together. I'm gonna to move my fabric here. 
It is my overspray. I just use an old sheet is all that is. And you can just use it till it starts to get a little bit stickier than you want it to be. Throw it into the wash and then use it again. That's all I do. It totally comes out in the wash, which is great. Uh, when I was traveling and teaching, I had a sheet that I brought around with me everywhere. And in between classes, I would just come home and wash it. And it always comes out. So um, if you've ever wondered, like, will it actually come out? It will. Okay, just fine. All right, so now what we need is a 13 inch circle. So I happen to have this really lovely tool from the sewing revolution, which happens to be a 13 inch, oops, we got a lot of, <laughs> a lot of glare there. Okay, 13 inch uh, circle. So from the sewing revolution is the name of the company. And I know that you can get them at Super Stitch in, I think it's in Erie, Pennsylvania. I taught out there once, a great store and she sells all of the rulers there. It's an Australian company, so they're a little bit harder to find. And there are probably other quilt shops who have them as well. I just know of that one because I've been there. Okay, so if you're looking for a 13-inch ruler, it's um, rulers, you know, they're spendy. So if you're going to do a lot of things where it involves circles, I totally recommend that. Otherwise, what I would do is I would hunt around your kitchen until you found something that was circular and about 13 inches. So if it's close enough, we're good enough. All right. Okay, so I'm going to replace my blade before we get started because I just got these new ones and we're going to test them out live right here. Uh, so this is a new blade. Whoa, look at how fancy that is. Uh, from Famore. So they're my favorite scissor people. And they, well, one of my favorite scissor people, it's true. I do have a couple of favorites. So they make these little scissors. So you've probably seen these a bunch of times on here. I love these for clipping. They work really, really well. These are little micro serrated scissors. And uh, they, uh, oh, here. Sorry, I forgot something over here. Hold on, half a second. So they're micro serrated scissors and they um, they work really well. So this is made by the same company. And so we're gonna see. So it's not micro serrated, it's gonna be fine. Okay. Oh, Michael just reminded me that we didn't go over the notions for today. Oh. So should we go back to that? Let's do it. I made the cute picture, we might as well. Do it, Michael, pull it up. I'll tell you all the cute things. See, there we go. See, I made that cute picture. It's just hard to remember all the things I have to do. Okay, so these are the things you're gonna need today. Sorry, back up, rewind. We'll do this, you know, four minutes ago, okay? You need the monster pillow. You need this, this ruler, which is what I was talking about, the 13 inch ruler, the basing spray, the thread. So today, normally I use gray thread for everything and today we're actually gonna use some colored thread. So that'll be fun. Uh, the poly request batting from Culture's Dream. We'll use some fiber fill from uh, Fairfield World, just the regular polyfill is what I'm gonna use today. The By Annie Stiletto, which you know I love. Clover's uh, flower head pins, of course, because that's what I use all the time. The Clover Wonder Clips, a felt tip marker for some tracing, micro serrated scissors. You have the Ulfa Rotary Cutter, and now I have for a blade that I'm gonna stick in there, the uh, Ulfa Self-Healing Cutting Mat, hand sewing needle, and a stretch needle for our machine. So there you go, those are all the things we need. <laughs> Phew, sorry about that. I forgot. It's going to take me a little while to get a hold of all of this. All right, so now I've got my blade. So while I was reading, I was taking my stuff out. So here's my new blade. Here's my old blade. I'm going to stick it in here. Okay, keep that nice and safe and sound. Here's the outside. I always want to make sure. So there's, there's a good example. Okay, so sometimes fuzz gets in here. We want to make sure and clean that out. So this gets cleaned out every once in a while. Make sure that you get rid of the mess. Okay, we're going to stick this blade on here. It's going to go on. Oh, no. There we go. Okay. Okay, pop that guy up. I'm going to put this one on. Then I put this little thing. I'm not even sure exactly what it's for, but I know it's important. And the thing is that it goes on like a cowboy hat so that the brims go up on the sides. Okay, and that's how I've been remembering it for years. This one goes on so that the dimple goes into the blade. So you can get it to catch. Come on, little guy. There we go. Okay, get that screwed on. I hold it with this finger on this side to keep it so it will stop twisting until it gets, you know, completely on. Okay, now I'm good to go. All right, let's give it a try. Okay, so now I've got this and I'm going to put a big X on this because I wanna remember that those are my used blades. So 
So I have made that mistake in the past where I have not marked my blade that it was the bad one and then I try to put it in. And I think that's what that little tick mark is actually on the rotary cutters when we were trying to figure out what is wrong. Is it the blade? And then I realized that I was trying to replace it with my, my bad blades. Oh, there's a reason it didn't work. Yeah. So we all do it. All right. So now I've got my, my ruler. I've got my fabric. I can cut it from either side. And I'm just, I'm going to mark it from this side just so we can see uh, what it looks like. Generally, I'll mark it from the back. But this way it won't matter. And you can see I'm just going to use my big old Sharpie pen, circle all the way around. So I could just put this baby down and then start cutting. I could do it. But a reason I'm not is because it's really easy if you're using just enough fabric to get it in the wrong space. And so I could have put, so this I put nice and close over here, but if I would have put it here and cut it out and then had to move it over here, I would have come off this side just a little bit, okay? You've seen me do it before. I'm learning slowly. Um, <laughs> but I do try to mark it first. So now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use the ruler to end my rotary cutter to cut all the way around this because I do want it to stay nice and smooth. Oh, that's kind of lovely. I think I swirled a little there. Um, so I'm just going to cut all the way around this. This is when we have to do a little gymnastics sort of to get around it. Wow, look at that. Okay, that, was, that was where I felt a, a little hiccup because this is not exactly. This is when I need one of those little spinning boards. If you guys have those, you know what I'm talking about. The rotating cutting boards are pretty amazing and you can do this all the way around. Okay. I'll try to be better about the next one. All right. So now I'll move over here. I think that, geez Louise. Okay. I was trying not to push too hard because it's a new blade and I was clearly not pushing hard enough. All right. So I'll put that to the side and move this over. See if I can cut this one. All right. It's weird because it gets to like weird, awkward, like body angles. You're like, I'm supposed to be cutting in a straight line. <laughs> it's like a full body exercise here, man. Get the rotating cutting mat. That's my, on my to-do list for today. This would be easier. You'd think I would have thought about this before. I'll cut out a few of these circles. I love circles. So I actually have quite a few circles rulers. All right. So now this is all scrap. It can go away. Okay. And now I have my two circles Ta -da! and they're perfect. Look at those circles. They're beautiful. So I like to do that a lot where I mark it with the ruler and then I, I cut it with the ruler still. So I could have, like I said, just cut it out here. It's just easier for me to tell what if things are going the right way, if I mark it first before I actually just cut it. So I've learned my lesson, mark it and then cut it, mark it, measure it, cut it. Um, sometimes I mark it, measure it, measure it again, mark it again, and then I can cut it. Um, sometimes it takes a little while. Okay. So this is the um, dimple cuddle. So the mess isn't too terrible. Okay. It's just a little bit of flicking it off. Okay. Give it a good shake. And we'll vacuum that later. Okay, so now we have our little circles and then we can figure out which way the nap goes. So if I pet, pet it in different ways, so if I pet it this way, and I was just guessing which way the nap might be by looking at it, um, I can see that it goes smooth this way and not that way. Okay, so this is my top to bottom. If I do it right to left, it's basically the same. So that's always the case with cuddle and it's good to remember. So this is my top to bottom and I'm gonna get it so that it is basically lined up there and I'm going to draw on the back that that's my nap. Okay. Now let's find it on this one. Okay. And these lines are um, fairly straight across of the dots. So I can sort of eyeball it to make sure that there's a line across that it's going down and then up. So, yep, that's my top to bottom. And there's my line for future reference. So when I pick it up, I don't have to do this whole thing again to make sure that I've got the top and the bottom together. Okay. So now this is going to be my back. I'm going to put it to the side. I also have a piece that I pre-cut earlier that is 
I remember right, two inches? Yeah, so this piece is two inches by 40 inches and this will be our side band. So those get cut and taken care of and just set to the side. And those I just measured with a ruler and it was fine. So this is my back and my gusset, I guess is what we would call that, all right? So I'll put those over there. I've got my face and we're not gonna put anything on the face quite yet, but this will be my face. Okay, so now let me get my little handy dandy box here and then I will show you how we're going to do it. So next we're going to do the eyes. So that's the first thing we're going to start with is the eyeballs and those are going to be applique on. Those are actually two pieces each and then they get applique onto the face. So they're a little bit more complex, I guess. Uh, I can't see. Did you do the pattern says to enlarge? Hold on. I can't see. Um, question. So the pattern says to enlarge it to 200% is the 13th inch circle the same as enlarging the pattern 200%. I believe so. Um, on the back, what they're talking about. So if you have the pattern, let me grab the paper for you really quick. On the pattern here, it shows you on the back. So you could you could take this to the copy store or on your home printer and enlarge it 200%. It should get you to a 13 inch circle. Okay. Um, I haven't tried that, so I can't verify that that's what it is, but that's what it should do. Um, I just use this for reference. So I just found a 13 inch ruler and use that because it was easy enough. Okay. You could totally like all of the other um, stuffed animal patterns and that sort of thing that we have done. You could enlarge this even more so if you really wanted to, or you could make it smaller if you wanted to. Um, there's lots of flexibility in that. You would just want to change the pattern pieces on the face too. Okay. They just need to keep in check. Uh, so we've got another question. When putting two layers of cuddle three together, do I need batting or can I just spray base them with 505? And you could just spray base them. Totally works. The batting just gives you more, um, more stability so it doesn't stretch as you're sewing. Two pieces of knit together will still stretch like crazy. Two pieces with batting in between won't stretch at all. So that's the, that's the big difference there. And why is batting needed? Um, it is needed uh, for, so it's just applique, yes. What that does is it gives us stability for the applique and it will also make it so your pillow has a lot more shape. Because it's a knit fabric, when we stuff it, if you don't actually put some batting behind those fronts, the front of the pillow will sort of be, I don't know, it'll, it'll show the shape of the polyfill underneath it and it won't be as nice and flat and cute. So the batting actually gives it some stability while you're sewing it. It makes the applique turn out much nicer and it also makes it so it just has some body to the pillow itself. So okay. if we're enlarging this piece 200% mm -hmm. to get that pattern, right? do we have to enlarge the other pieces as yes. well? Yes, yeah, that's what I was saying, is enlarge all of those, like the tongue, the eye, all of that stuff would need to be enlarged the same amount. So, well, do you mean on this side? Yes. yes. On this side, no. Okay. This is it. real size. Got it, actual size. Got this it. is actual size. If you need a 13 inch circle, which is what this is, so it says cut, well, this one says 15 because that's an old pattern it was before I fixed it. Um, but cut two 13 inch circles of cuddle dimple. Okay, so that's what this is. So you just need two two big circles. If you get it out of, um, you know, with a ruler or with a pizza pan or by enlarging this 200%, you can do that. Okay, so there's a few ways of doing it. Yes, these are actual size for 13 inches. But what I was saying is if you were gonna do this a little bit bigger, so you wanted to do one that was, you know, 300%, you would need to enlarge these two. Okay. And you just enlarge them however you want. And honestly, like the eyeballs could be totally different sizes. And this is a great place to jump off and try your own silly faces. We did those um, pillows with the quilt cadets patterns over our cuddle camp. Same idea where you can take it and sort of go with this. So if you love this, that's actually a great pattern for it. And I wish I could remember mood pillows. That's what they're called. It's the quilt cadet mood pillows. And she has a whole bunch of variety in that. And this, it's done very much the same way. Okay. Super cute pattern very fun. All right. I think we're caught up. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Look at all the questions that Michael sends me. So thanks. Okay. So eyes, let's get started with the eyes. So I've got a few patterns for them because I cut mine out already because I tried it once and made that version of it. So now I've got the, this is the outside of the eye. So it came like this. Okay. I taped it. I cut them out. So now I have my out, my not outside eye. But this is the right eye. This is the left eye. And then I made a little one for the pupil, right? So the pupils I already cut out because I needed something done ahead. Okay, so here are my little pupils. I traced around them with the uh, silver Sharpie because that's what works best for me. And then I cut right out along those edges. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to set those aside. We don't want to lose them. And then we're going to trace out the eyeballs. So let's do that. I don't think I, those are for the teeth. So let's do the back of this. So on this, because we are applying the eyes to the orange, let me show you on here. So because we're doing this applique, this is all raw edge. If I do this with a Sharpie, which is my you know, general tool that I use, what ends up happening is you get little black edges along here from where the ink was. All right, so this is something to avoid. So what I'm gonna do today is to use a, it's a disappearing ink. Let me see, it's air erasable. So I'm gonna use that to trace around this and then the ink will just go away and it won't be a problem. All right, if I use my, I had learned my lesson from using my Sharpie, is that then I have to go in there and carefully trim off all of the stuff. So this is, here we go. It's a Clover Air Erasable Extra Fine Marker. This just happens to be one I had. We're gonna use that. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this on here and I'm just gonna trace around it. And just trace all the way around. For one of those so this is my right eye and then this is my left eye so i don't need to be careful of which way the nap is going at this point because i'm just going to cut it out and then we can figure it out like i don't need to put the i don't need to like have a mark on here that says the nap needs to go that way because i'm just going to figure it out after i cut it out okay so now i've got that done and now i can cut those out so then i can use my little fomores if you're really handy with a Rotary cutter, you could do these circles, but I'm not that good at them. They tend to get a little jaggedy when I'm doing tight circles. So I'm just gonna cut right along this line. And this line, because it's air erasable marker, even if I get a little bit that shows when I actually do the applique, it will disappear later. Totally be gone. So I like the air erasable for that. I. Uh, I bought it years ago for quilting and I found out that it's a bad idea if you're not going to use it right away because it's air erasable. It will actually just disappear on you. Got to be aware that you need to use it soon. So there we got one done. We'll get rid of that cuddle dust in a second. And we'll cut this guy out too. So these are those Fomori scissors I was telling you about. These are the six inch I think they're called razor edge scissors or something. I really like them quite a lot. They're very good handhold. So if you've got any sort of issues with your hands not being as easily functioning as they used to be, this is a great one. I like them because they don't make my thumb hurt. Okay, so now I've got my two circles. I'm gonna get this put out of the way. So now because I've cut it with cuddle, the just cuddle three, the stuff that's on here that's extra, I can kind of pull it off. You can flick it. And then what I do is I come back over and I take this extra stuff off. So my nap is running this way and I can tell because it falls off the bottom of the eyeball. And what I have found is that that gets in the way when I'm applicating. So this is me. Every once in a while, I get really nitpicky. This would be one way I do it. All right. So there's that one. And then we'll do this one. I'll clean that up. You can see there's not a lot of mess. And this flick method really seems to get a lot of it off, which is great. Okay. So now I can pet it, figure out where my nap is going. Do I need to trim any off? And I can see that from behind. I'm just going to trim the tiniest little bit there. Okay, now we've got a couple of eyes. I don't have carpeting, so this helps. It's just, it's just a cement floor. I just vacuum up there. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now I've got my eyeballs. So this is where we're going to start to like kind of compare the pattern to what we have, the pattern of what we have. So when I look at the pattern, or let me get, get the front of it. So if we look at the front of it, you can see like the eyeball, the pupils are set at different levels or whatever. They're basically even from each other. And this is what I noticed works pretty well is we keep those fairly even across from each other, but they're in different sections of the eye. So what I need to do is figure out. So here's my top to bottom. 
And I'm going to set this so you guys can see it this way better. Okay, so this, and this one is my top to bottom. Okay, so if I want them on my monster in sort of this position, okay, where they're going to be a little bit cockeyed, and then I need to get the eyeballs on here, or the pupils on here, and I've got them, and I can sort of just play with them and see where I want them. So that seems fairly reasonable. Does that look okay, Hawk? I think it looks great. Okay. So does, so does this guy. <laughs> Baby Lock needs a machine or a machine name. I don't have one for it. I'm not very good at naming my sewing machines. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Oh, one of the things that I found too is when I'm doing this, if you want to be very finicky, is you can kind of do this thing where you draw around it with a sharp, or not your sharpie, but your stiletto. Okay. And you can sort of get a little bit of a mark. You see that? I don't know uh -huh. if you guys can see very well that I can get the mark there. The other thing I can do is ruffle it all the way around. And then I take it off and I can see where I wanted it to be. Okay. Got it. So <laughs> two weird little tricks for you to figure out where do I want my applique to go? Right there. Okay, so now I'm going to spray the back of my pupils. It's a phrase I have never used before. I'm just going to spray a little bit of the uh, 505 here. I flip this over. These are both the same size, so it doesn't matter uh, which one they go on. I just do a little pet, make sure my nap is running down. I'm going to come back over here, put that where it was, stick it on. Do the same thing with this other one. My nap's going that way. Look over. Stick it on. Okay, so it doesn't have to be precise, uh, really. I mean, that was a little finickier than I might be sometimes, but um, I do like to be able to sort of get an idea of what it will be look like, what it will be looking like when I'm done. But this is that's a great technique, especially this brush up one. I really like that when you're using with C3 because you can so easily see where it's still smooth. So for placement on other things, that actually works really well. We can use that when we're putting the whole face together as well. We put the eyeballs on there mm -hmm. and try to look at it and see what we think. And then you can take them off, put them right back on where they were. All right. So I guess we're going to sew now. All right. All right. Let's do it. We're going to sew the eyes, the pupils onto the eyeballs itself. I can't remember what I told you guys for the size for <laughs> the serpentine or the blanket stitch that I did. So I'm just going to give it a try. Michael, can you, <laughs> can you see what I put in there? I don't remember what it was. And I worked on a few of them. So we're just going to do a little blanket stitch here and thread my machine. And I'm going to actually use the blue thread today up top. And I don't normally, if you've watched this very often, I normally sew everything with just a medium gray thread. But what I have found is because navy is so dark, it'll show more. And then um, I'm going to show this and I can't see it. Uh -huh. What else okay. am I going to show? I don't, well, I don't know, but <laughs> I can't even see the needle help. Okay. Let's see. I think that went through. Yes. All right. We I still can't give up the machine to go have the auto threader <laughs> fix. I won't, I won't give it up. <laughs> Maybe once we name her, then we can give it up. And then I know that she'll come home. The 1.6 millimeter length. Thank you. Three millimeter width. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to find it on here. So what did we say? 1.6 and 3. Okay, so there we go. So what that does is changes your um, the width of how far this comes out. So that's totally uh, up to you how much you want it to show. What I realize is when it's too narrow, I feel like I might not catch it. But the length is important too, it, because if you do it too long, what ends up happening is that it's really hard to get it to go around in an actual circle. So let's give this a try. Get my needle to come down. See if we can make this come around. So there went the little stitch over. Okay, so now I can see it's starting to be a little bit harder to turn. So I'm going to 
turn it like this. If you have a knee lift, this is a great place to use it. Okay, and if I do this and it shows my my thread, it you can tell if it's not perfect. So I'll show you my circle will not be perfect. But if you use the same color thread and your applique stitches just sort of sink in there, nobody will ever know that you weren't perfect. Okay, the other thing that I have found is that I like to use the, or I like to leave that uh, stitch long at the end so I can see where I started. So you can see this thread over here, it's hanging out waiting for me. I used to just trim that off right away. And then I realized that if I do that, I have no idea where I started. And that can be an issue. Okay, so I'm gonna stitch around this. And I'm gonna show you with the other one, I'm gonna use a water soluble stabilizer, which obviously you don't have to use but I do find that sometimes it makes it easier to get and see the edge. Okay, so I'm come around. I think she needs a, a spa day soon, a little creaky. Okay, so there's my not so great circle, but it's, it's close-ish, okay? From that side, looks perfect. So I'm just gonna trim that off. There we go. So now I've got the other eye and it's glued on there, based it on there. So now I'm done, I can take this off. This was just tear away stabilizer is all this is. Okay, and I'm gonna use it on there because we didn't even talk about this, sorry. Oops. I just threw it on there. I was like, you know what I'm doing, right? Uh, the reason I use this is because it does make it a little bit more stable as I'm sewing, especially because I'm sewing in a circle. So I'm just gonna tear off most of this and be done with it, it's fine. Okay, so there's that. What I have found is if I try to sew this in a circle as I'm sewing, this is all doing this sort of thing, and then it kind of bunches up and it's difficult to work with. If I stick it on here, it gives me some stability that as it's turning, it's much more stable to work with. So the other thing I can do is use a piece of water soluble stabilizer on there and get that in there. Oh, that is a good question. Could you use that? nylon invisible thread for the applique? You totally could. I just feel like that's, uh, it's not the cheapest stuff. <laughs> so I would rather use a color that matched, but you absolutely could. Yeah, 100%, you're just gonna, you're still gonna get the little, um, like the impression of where the stitches were, but you won't see it at all, which is great. So yeah, absolutely. I just have to do a little rotate here thing as we go around. I should have put my open open toe foot on, see a little better. So the one thing I will tell you about using the water stable, water soluble stabilizer on here is it makes it a little slicker. So my fingers can't, I don't have as much dexterity with it as I did with the other one, which is sort of interesting to do them right next to each other. See there, I just went off, darn it. We'll fix it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, do a little lock stitch there. All right. Now we'll see how bad that circle was. Oh, see, it got a little weird right there. Oh, well, it's close enough. I think it'll be fine. We'll take this off. I mean, really, if anybody is getting that close to my monster face's eyeball, they are too picky. So I'm just going to tape that out, take that out. So that's where I came off just a little bit more than I should have, but we just push it over a little and it'll be okay. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm all about, you know, making the best of it. All right. So then I can take this and rip this off same way I did before. So I just needed it for the stability now. I don't need it for later. If I, you could leave it in if you used like cutaway, you totally could. You could even use, leave it in if it was the tearaway. You just need to cut around it. I just don't want the extra stiffness from the stabilizer in there. So now I've got my two eyes. All right. So after the eyeballs, we're going to do the teeth. So we're going to set these, I'm going to set these right over here. Let's see if there was another question. Okay, good. All right. So I'm going to put my eyes, put my eyes over here on the face and then we're going to do the teeth. All right. So now I gotta find the teeth pattern. So in the teeth pattern, there is a right tooth and a left tooth. 
okay? Because you can see in the picture, they are two different sizes. So we have two different sizes for the pattern. So we're gonna do those, we just need one of each. I do need to check to make sure which way my nap is going before I put those teeth on because I want the teeth to be right side up and have the nap go in the right direction. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and I'm going to use my air erasable pen to trace around these guys. Because this would be another one that if you did it with the black Sharpie, you're totally gonna have a little black edge on there. And we don't particularly want that. I'm gonna cut these out and set those to the side too. So there's no additional stabilizing or anything that needs to be done here. And we'll just do a little flick and a little trim if I need to. And then we're good to go. So we're just cutting these. These are the micro serrated scissors. And I have a couple pairs of these. Kai's make some, Kai makes some as well, which I have used and I like a lot. And then uh, Karen K. Buckley makes a really good pair too. So any of those scissors, we've got those, those are great. So now we've got our little teeth. You can see, you can get some little cuddle dust off of there. Okay, you can do a little flick, flick, flick. Get those off. And in that same regard, I can see, okay, how does the, how does the nap laying on there? Am I going to have to trim anything off? Doesn't look like it. We're good to go. Teeth are ready. All right. Those are super easy. We probably should have started with the teeth because they were like stupidly easy. Eyes were a little bit more and then we're going to get more. Okay. So next, <laughs> so we did the teeth. So now we're going to do the tongue. The tongue is a little bit more. So the tongue is kind of funky. And I remember the first time I made this, uh, let me find the tongue pattern. So if I do the tongue and then I'm like, okay, with cuddle, we generally sew with a half inch seam allowance, which means there's nothing up here. So how would I possibly turn it inside out? That doesn't work. And I was like, even with a quarter inch seam allowance, like up here, this becomes an eighth of an inch opening to turn it. And I was like, how does that, what were they thinking? And then I realized that this is actually just your stitching line that we're going to trace. So we're not going to trace it to cut it out. We're going to trace it to do our stitching line. All right. So if you're like me, sometimes like you get hurried and you're like, oh, I'll just cut out all the pattern pieces and then I'll figure it out later. This is what happens. You cut this out and then you're like, how? We can't sew it together. Okay. So that becomes a problem. So I've got a piece here that I'm going to fold in half and we're going to stitch it. Uh, I've got my nap going this direction. I want my tongue. Let me see what I did with this guy, because the tongue should yeah, go this way when it folds out. All right, so, which means that when it's coming out here, the nap will come out this direction, but whichever way, the nap is going to run this way. All right, so my nap is running here. So when my tongue comes out, this is how I have to figure these things out, the nap's running the direction I want. Okay, so let me move this guy for you again. All right. So I know I want it this way. Oh, darn it. So now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to trace this. So I'm going to put a couple of little pins in here just to hold it together while I'm sewing it. So what this does, why we want to do it this way, because it seems kind of weird, but it actually works really well because this shape, because it's a knit, trying to sew this evenly is really difficult. So this is sort of the shape of the stocking, but much, much smaller. So when we did the stocking, it was pretty easy because it was so big. This is so small that if you tried to sew in this sort of edge, it would definitely be um, difficult and not fun. So this is a lot easier. We're just going to trace around the pattern. Okay, and then up here, I'm going to draw a line. And that's where I want to cut it. All right, so I've, this is my stitching line again. So I'm going to come around here and I'm going to stitch that whole thing. Ready? Bring it around. All right. So I'm not going to change my thread out and we're going to see what happens. <laughs> All right, I do need to change it for the next part though. So I suppose I could change it right now, but we're just going to see what happens. Oh, I didn't change my stitch. Oh no. We got a little blanket stitch going there and that is not what we needed. 
So we're gonna change this up to 3.5 stitch length. That explains why I was having a hard it's time. A straight stitch. Just a straight stitch. And actually I'm gonna change this down to a three. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna come around some corners and I want it to be a nice smooth corner. And the bigger the stitch, that's kind of the thing with the blanket stitch too, is the bigger the stitch, the harder it is to get a smooth corner. So if you're ever struggling with that with the blanket stitch, shrink your stitch length. All right, whenever we're doing anything that needs some real um, strength as it comes around, that smaller stitch is better. So a smaller stitch in cuddle is still a three, which is a large stitch in cotton. But so I'm just gonna do it nice and so and you slow. And you can see that I'm using my hands to kind of manipulate it as I sew it around. And then I can speed it back up again and just follow that line. And I'll come back up to the beginning, do a little back stitch, come off the end. All right, so now I've got this whole thing sewn and I've got it sewn fairly close to the line, as close as you know, I can, <laughs> that's important. And I'm just gonna cut this out. So I'm gonna use my, my new fresh rotary blade. Actually, it's really nice. There's something really lovely about a new blade. With new scissors, you're like, oh, this is so good. Okay, I'm not really gonna care, obviously, how nice it's done because it's all gonna go to the inside. Okay, so we're gonna cut this off um, nice and short. If I wanted to, I could make it really short and then I don't have to clip anything. So with Cuddle, because it is a knit fabric, you generally don't have to clip. So I'm gonna come along here on this curve, clip it down just a little bit. The other thing that you can do is you could come in here and clip just a little. You can also not clip any at all. So we'll leave this part unclipped and when we turn this, we'll be able to see what that does to it, okay? So you can see, just kind of whack it out and you'll be fine. I did do one, let's see if I can find it. So I did do one where I decided I would try to put a little batting into it to give it a little, a little, I don't know, extra, okay? This is another little clover tool, so one of their other stilettos. Okay, pull this inside out, and then I can take this little curve in here and use it to push that, push that out. Push out my little curve so it comes all the way around. There is a tongue for you. All right, so, I'll show you this guy. So this is the other tongue that I made. I made this before and I put a piece of batting in it, which you can see there's the little batting. Okay, and I thought, oh, that'll be really cute because it'll be, I don't know, a more textured tongue. For some reason, I thought that was a good idea. What happens is that this now has zero flop. So when I try to put it in the mouth, this is what it does. <laughs> so it doesn't do the flop down like the other, the tongue actually does. So this, <laughs> Then became this thing that just sat here. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that was not the right look. Not, so <laughs> not, not as cute. Not as cute. Not at all. So don't put batting in it. It doesn't work. So there's my there's my little extra lesson. I like to try things to see if something will work better. That did not. So no batting in the tongue. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to um, sort of get this flattened out a little bit. We can come along here later or now, whichever one I'll show you really quick, is that we can come along here and pull up these stitches just a little bit out of the seam. Okay. And it'll give um, a little, uh, some softness to it here. Okay, pull that up out of the, out of the stitch length, or out of the stitches. All right. What was this turning tool called by Clover? This fun one right there um, with a little swoop tip. It's a Joan Hawley tool, Press Perfect maybe. I think it's from her like series of tools. So it's heat resistant. That's the big like selling point of that one. I like the little curve at the end. I use it for lots of different things when I need to sort of push out um, round bits. Okay. So the, the gray, gray bit down here is heat resistant. So it's really good for like holding small points when you're quilting. And then you can use those next to the iron and not burn your fingers. Okay, so now I've got it all turned. The seams are out, so it's nice. Okay, I want my tongue to do this. So I wanna stitch it 
on this side for the top is what I'm going to do. So if I do it this way, my bottom stitches will be on the top and the bottom stitches just aren't as nice. Okay, so let me see if this is, yeah, this is my bottom stitches. They're just not, it doesn't look as nice as that side. Okay. So it's a weird little thing, but you know, sometimes we're picky about things. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to rethread my machine. I should have had an orange bobbin and I feel like I must have used it. So we're going to put white on the bottom <laughs> and see what happens. So we'll be able to see it, unfortunately, but hopefully we can pull some stitches up and hide it. Okay. So rethread my machine. So all of the threading up here is done without the foot up. So the foot is up or with the foot up, without the foot down. So it's with the foot up, okay? I get it all the way to the point that I've come on this uptake lever or whatever they call it. And then I come down around here, put it around that little little bit by the needle, okay? And then I'm gonna put my foot down. And what that does is it stops the thread from pulling out. So that's an important thing to remember if you're having it pull a lot while you're threading is you your foot just needs to go down. See, if you're not looking, I can do it. <laughs> I just got to be really quick and get it in there before the camera gets there. And then I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> so I've got the orange thread on the top. We're just going to do the white thread on the bottom, see what happens. So now what we need to do is stitch basically down the middle of the tongue. I'm going to start up at the top and I'm just going to eyeball it and see what happens. You could totally mark it with your stiletto. And if you mark things with the stiletto, you can usually see it for a while. Okay, so you can oh, sort right. of see that. You can kind of follow those lines if you want to. I'm just gonna, you know, eyeball it and we'll see if we get down there. All right, so I'm gonna stick this under here and I'm going to try to get it even here. So I'm looking at the marks on the top of my foot that I've got a mark over here and a mark over here and it's about in the center of it, okay? I'm also going to put my needle down lift my foot and I'm going to pull this around to the back so I have a little something to pull if I need to to get it to start working it and I've that got it thread. at the thread mm -hmm. okay so I've got it at a 3.5 stitch length now because I don't need it to hold as much as I need it to simply just be there so we'll do a little stitch I've got my thread here I'm gonna pull it just a little to keep it going okay so now I'm just kind of eyeballing the width of the tongue and my foot that's what I did before and it was fine. So that's what I'm gonna do again. And we're gonna hope it's gonna be fine too. All right, where you end it is really up to you. I'm gonna end it there. Do a little lock stitch and cut my thread. So now I can bring it over here, equip my little threads. And on the back, you can see all the white thread that's showing up there mm -hmm. because my bobbin was white. So now I just trim that, grab my stiletto. So now the white thread is going to hide a little bit better. I'll just cover that up. Just scratch it out. It's fine. Look at no white thread at all. Okay. And pretend it didn't even happen. And now we got it, the orange thread on this side, which totally just blends in. Mm -hmm. Cute little tongue. Ta da. <laughs> okay, I want to get rid of this tongue. I'm just going to throw that tongue away because that's the bad one with the batting in it. And I don't want anybody to do that because that was a that was a bad idea. Um, it was clever. I thought maybe it would work. It did not. So <laughs> I try to do all the experimenting for you so that I can have the failures and it just works for you. So now we've got the tongue. And then we've got the mouth, and I think we have to do the mouth tomorrow. But let's do the horns really quick, because the horns is the same thing, okay? And then we're going to finish up. So uh, the mouth is a whole process. So we'll do that tomorrow, because I don't want to, uh, I don't want you guys to miss that at all. So I'm going to show you how I do the horns, because it's basically the same way. All right, so I've got my two pieces of blue. And as we talked, we didn't really talk about it earlier. We use blue in this and not black. And so the picture kind of looks black. But Hawk and I were talking about is that the blue is really, it's a nice, it's a nice change. I like it. So the blue is really nice uh, compared to doing black for everything, which is what I would have thought to do. Okay. 
All right, so now I'm just going to trace this guy. So I have it marked on here which way I want my nap to go. And that's because when it's on the pillow, I want it to sort of sit cockeyed and the horns not to come straight off, but I want the fabric to run down. Okay, so I can pet my fabric, make sure it's going the right direction, and then get this on here. This is the same way and that we're going to trace around it and then sew it. So this part I'm going to leave open. Okay, so I just want to mark that so that I know not to sew that part. Cut my fabric, make sure that's right. Yep. Put this together and do the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to sew around these. And then tomorrow we'll be back at 10 o'clock and we will finish this up. I'll do the mouth for you guys and then show you how we put all of that on. I think that wasn't cocked as much as I wanted it to be. I'm actually going to do that again. This is the joy of marking it before. Because I can just remark it. Oops. You just have to remember which one <laughs> is the right mark. Uh, I have had in the class, <clears throat> there was a girl and she decided midway through the class that she would just change, have two Sharpies out because she was changing it. So like fixing things so often that she was getting lost on which fix was which. It was pretty funny. So you got to kind of keep track of where you're at. So I'm going to put just a couple of pins in here because I don't want the fabric to shift on me too much as I'm sewing. All right, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to try to cleverly pin so I know which line to sew on. Make sure that my sides are caught there. All right, and then we're going to sew around these. So I'm just going to sew around this and leave that bottom open. All right, same thing here. Sew around it, leave the bottom open. Okay, I'm going to change the muff thread again. Okay, and this one I'm going to change because we're going to stuff these horns. So tomorrow that'll be one of the things that we do is we stuff these guys. And so we want to make sure that when the seam gets some stress on it, that it's not going to show. So I'm actually going to thread the blue on top here. Okay. The blue is especially hard because it's like, I can't see it with the, the thing behind it because it's dark. Oh, you know what? I have better light. Hey, look, I have a better light there, guys. I can't get close to it, though, because the camera is right there. There we go. That'll help, right? Yeah, that, I, know. <laughs> I know, just right in my face. Right in between. Like, I can't see anything. You got it. <laughs> I took a side angle, and that was better. Okay, so I don't have any blue thread here. I will do a blue spool. I'm like, I used it all the other day when I was doing it. A little blue bobbin. So I'm just putting a dark thread in there because that's really the key. It's just two dark threads. So this is a dark green, which is fine. And then the blue thread up top. And that way when that stream get that seam gets stressed when we stuff it, you won't be able to see it at all. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here. We've still got it on a 3.5, right? Okay, I'm gonna shrink that back down to a three because this is gonna get some stress because I'm gonna stuff it. So I'm gonna back stitch there and then just follow that line as I go. And I can kind of use both hands again and guide it to go underneath as evenly as possible. That thread is ridiculously long. Okay, and then I'll come back over here, and back stitch and cut. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. Okay, I'm just gonna back stitch and then stitch all the way around. Make it a little slow. Oh, hello. That sounded terrible. And I don't know what happened. I don't know. Both threads are still there. All right. That may be her calling out for help. Spa day, please. <laughs> we all need them every once in a while. Let's see what happens. Uh, somebody's asking why we're not using the auto needle better because it broke because it at the broke. beginning of the pandemic and nobody has time for that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because I haven't gotten it fixed and I uh, didn't put in a needle right. 
is what happened. So I didn't put the needle in all the way up. And then when I tried to thread it, it hit the bottom of it and bent the needle threader. So that will happen. Okay, so now I don't know what happened there. I'm gonna do a little investigating because that was that was not a happy noise, but all the threads are there. So okay, get all of that trimmed off. Now I can trim around these things. So I'm just gonna trim these with the scissors real quick. Okay, and we'll trim all the way around this guy. And then we're gonna turn these inside out and we're gonna stuff them tomorrow. And then I'm gonna show you a weird little way that we're gonna sort of close them up because we're not really going to close them. Okay, I'm going to stitch across that or cut across that line. So now I've got my horn. It can be turned inside out. And now those seams, if they get stretched at all, I still can't see it. If this were white, you'd be able to see the tiniest little flecks of white in there. I've made that mistake before. So I always try to use at least a dark thread. It doesn't necessarily have to be matching, but it needs to be dark. So a medium gray won't work so well in a dark fabric like this. So the green, you can't, you can't really see the green. And when I turn it inside out, you definitely don't notice that it's not the right color, but you'll definitely see it if it is too light. All right, so that's important to remember when you're choosing the thread colors. I really generally don't try to match my threads. When I'm doing applique, it's a little bit more important, but I do try to match the intensity the right the value is it the value of the color that i'm trying to match i think i want a dark thread and gotcha, a yes. and a dark fabric sorry you asked me a question and i was reading um, oh sorry uh, no, and no, i don't, no, I don't know okay. our words. so we've got um <laughs> uh, i got a great question okay um, you can use the auto threader just fine if you have the dual feet or the walking foot yes okay. yeah that was never a problem <laughs> it was me and changing my needle the wrong way or you know not changing it the right way i guess is what it was all right. All right. So now we've got both the horns. So I'm going to stick those over to the side too. Okay. So tomorrow we're going to come back 10 a.m. Pacific time. We will do this all over. It's getting to be a face, you guys. Look at this. Look at it. It's getting there. So we got the horns. We got some little eyeballs. We got some teeth and no mouth, but a tongue. It's sort of, <laughs> it's getting there. It's like a child's drawing at this point. Just wait, it will get better. So we'll be back tomorrow. We'll finish this all up. I'll show you how to put the pillow together. The mouth is kind of a thing. So we're going to actually do a little bit of binding, which is uh, crazy, but it's going to be super fun. So we'll be back tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, I hope you'll join us then. We have a winner for today. So thank you again to everyone who shared. I really appreciate it. And we'll ask you to do the same thing tomorrow. We'll give away another kit tomorrow too. That winner was Linda M. from Montana. Congratulations, Linda. We will get a hold of you or you can reach out to us via Facebook Messenger. Um, either way, we'll get a hold of each other and we will get your mailing address and I will get you a kit ordered and send that off to you. So thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate everybody being here and joining us for this cute little um, pillow part one. We'll be back again tomorrow. Until then, happy sewing. <laughs>